to us who's going to tell us about uveitis and hiv patients i know we could hear you for an hour or more and keep learning but today we have to restrict to very sadly 10 minutes dr vishwas no problem can you share your screen yeah can you see my screen yes okay am i audible yes okay at the outset i'd like to express my happiness and gratitude that uvit is included in the ais was <laughs> here see your webinar yes. it and will be included in future yeah it so it is a good opportunity i think is the budding ophthalmologist uh, would be able to learn a lot and uvit is often under diagnosed uh, misdiagnosed under treated improperly treated so it's important that uvit is uh, taught and discussed so i'm going to talk in very briefly uvit is in hiv um, i start the quotation my lovers and my friends stand aloof from my soul and my kinsmen stand after all my heart panteth my strength faileth me as for the light of my eyes it is also gone from me sadly this is the plight of an hiv patient is not only the various organs are involved eye is also involved and we have found in a study in 100 consecutive patients 40% patient had one or more ocular lesion and 17% of the patients had cmb retinitis however uveitis in hiv has reduced a lot due to the combined antiretroviral therapy which you call car therapy we have studied the ocular lesions on 1000 consecutive patients in india with dr sudarshan and we found the cmb retinitis is still the commonest opportunistic infection in hiv positive patients even in the heart era what are the anterior segment problem that one of the most common problem in the anterior segment is the herpes zoster ophthalmicus if you see herpes zoster ophthalmicus in young man always think of hiv and rule out hiv infection do we describe the case of acute hemorrhagic hypopian in a case of hiv and uveitis and these patients was immunofluorescence done from the anterior chamber showed uh, my uh, herpes zoster virus posterior segment lesions is the most common and pertinent because it's a vision threatening disease it can be benign like hiv retinopathy multiple cotton wool spots can be seen micro aneurysms and retinal hemorrhages fortunately it disappears between 6 to 8 weeks time but what is very common is the cmb retinitis so it can be vision threatening but it's not difficult to diagnose it has got a characteristic feature granular whitish patch a dry type of lesion necrotizing um, lesions sharp granular border and often take a pizza pie appearance as shown in this picture it can be perivascular distribution or can be involving fulminant type involving multiple quadrant or can produce prostate branch angiitis like this fortunately it responds to anti cmb treatment as you see over the picture over here it can cause pmb papillitis also involving the optic disc as well as the surrounding retina so the hill cmb retinitis can cause retinal detachment the untreated cmb retinitis can go lead to the gross visual loss by doing the optic atrophy as well as the thin and atrophic retina how do you manage a cmb retinitis earlier we used to use the intravenous gancyclovir therapy but now it has been replaced by oral val gancyclovir therapy or intravitreal gancyclovir therapy and this was the intravenous gancyclovir therapy which you used to give earlier in uh, about 15 20 years back now we have switched to intravitreal injection of gancyclovir but or uh, this is the dosage is 2000 microgram twice weekly induction dose and 2000 microgram once a week maintenance dose the val gancyclovir is a 450 mg two tablet two times daily is the course in a case of cyto cytomegalovirus retinitis it works very well and does not have local infusion related complications retinal detachment about 30% of the cases can go undergo retinal detachment and here in this case we require first line of vitrectomy and silicone oil tamponade and this silicone oil is kept for a longer time than usual and new is to take new is new is to need to take a precautions like double gloving and take aseptic precautions for 
not getting the infected needle stick injury, etc. So some of the other uh, rare variety, but uh, devastating disease is progressive outer retinal necrosis. It mimics CMB retinitis or acute retinal necrosis. It rapidly progresses. It starts from the center and goes to the periphery, spares retinal vasculature caused by the herpes just a virus or other viruses in the herpes family. These are characteristic pictures. No anterior chamber or vitreous reaction, no vasculitis, optic nerve involvement, and poor response to treatment, as I told earlier. This is the classic picture of progressive outer retinal necrosis. You can see that from the center to the periphery, retina is necrosed and with the perivascular sparing. One can have a crack mud appearance, which is quite classical, deep retinal whitening with perivascular clearing. One can get very rarely acute retinal necrosis in HIV positive patients and the treatment is not different. One can know, have the toxoplasmic retinochoroiditis, which is little different from that immunocompetent patients. It can be multifocal, it can be diffuse, and it can produce um, disseminated lesion. The response to standard therapy, as I've shown you, one of our case, the heal scar after treatment. Ocular tuberculosis is quite unique in our country in HIV positive patients. We have described in the American Journal of Ophthalmology in 2006. And it can have myriad of presentations starting from a small tubercle to a subretinal abscess or even panophthalmitis or conjunctival tuberculoma. One can have the prognosis is not that good that they can lead to the panophthalmitis if not treated urgently and inadequately. One can have subretinal abscess as I shown you in these pictures and this response to the treatment not very well but you need to be recognized very early. I just uh, wanted to share a case, a routine case from Mumbai, 43-year-old male. He was diagnosed as CMB retinitis as he is the patient was HIV positive. All HIV positive patients did not be a CMB retinitis. He was treated with the intravenous gansaclovir. Before the COVID days, I used to shake hand with all my patients, this is my routine. I found something wrong in the hand and the hand showed that what is the eye picture. If there is a rashes in the hands and this patient ind indeed had syphilitic retinitis, with subretinal deposits of the whitish yellow deposits in the retina. It was a RPR TPHA positive, treated with intramuscular injection penicillin. And uh, this, you can see that after treatment, so much such a nice resolution of inflammation. One can have uh, the vitritis with retinal vasculitis in syphilis cases. Now we are seeing more and more syphilis cases in HIV positive patients, and we should be careful about diagnosing it. Neuroophthalmic manifestations, one can have papilledema with peripapillary hemorrhage, and here the, the vitreous biopsy showed, uh, the India preparations showed cryptococcus organisms. One can have optic atrophy with the neural uh, cerebral involvement of the HIV infections. One of the very peculiar things which occurs in HIV positive patients is the immune recovery vitritis when they put on the protease inhibitors. It was seen in 15% patients on a high, highly effective antiretroviral therapy. And here is a CMB retinitis. It responded with the treatment, but once the protease inhibitors was put on, there was a pan-UVitis, which responded, of course, with the treatment of the steroid, and, uh, but there is an epiretinal membrane formation. So what happens to that one? The CD4 count goes up and that reduces the immunologic reactions coding pan uveitis In conclusion, in HIV ocular lesions in AIDS patients, we found lesions correlate with decreased CD4 cell count, like, you know, CD, CD4 cell count 50 or less, then we have CMB retinitis, a little higher we get TB or toxoplasma. CMB retinitis are cotton spots are the common ocular posterior segment involvement. Intraocular TB is quite unique in Indian patients, and it should be remembered all the time. Ophthalmologists may be the first clinicians to encounter an HIV positive patient and make a diagnosis of HIV. Thank you very much. And thank you, Dr. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Vishra. That was such a superbly wonderful talk. Really like, enjoyed it. I wish you were uh, one of the earlier speakers so more people would have heard you. No could problem. you uh, start sharing your screen?